Welcome to Live Doc, your online Doc Yomi Shear. Shalom, welcome back to today's Daf Psachem Membez. We are 11 lines from the top of the Amid. It says in one of the Mishnah told us that the water that the Nachtim, the baker, uses to rinse his hands, that water needs to be poured out in order that it doesn't ferment and turn into chametz. Tani Chad that we learned in one b'risa, Shoivchin, B'mokay Madrin. They're meant to be uh, poured in uh, a place of incline, a place where it's uh, sloped, in which case the water will trickle down and won't gather, won't remain in one place, and will not become chametz. Rather than pouring them in a place which is ishbarn, Rashi says, cracked, uh, cracked earth, meaning that the water stays in one place, it gathers, so you meant to be shayfich in a makim madrin, ve'ein shayfchin, we don't pour it, in a makim ha'ishburin, a place where the water will stand still, sit in its place, and turn into chametz. That's one b'raisa. V'tani idach, however, in the other b'raisa it says, shayfchin the makim ishburin. You can pour them in a place where they will stand idle. Like kasha, the answer is, hadan afishi, the kavu. When we have lots of water, in which case, it uh, will gather, it won't get absorbed in the ground. Therefore, there's a concern of chimots. Make sure you do it in a sloped area so that it trickles away. Ha the lina fishi, the brisa which allows it to be poured in a place where it will stand still, speaking where there isn't a lot of water. The lake kavu, it won't gather, gather, rather they'll get absorbed in the ground prior to any chimots concern being generated. Amar Yuda isha lo solash el v'mayim shalano. An isha should only use for her lisha, for her kneading, water which slept overnight, which was taken out of the ground and stayed outside overnight and allowed it to cool off. So here we have the halach of Mayim Shalom. Darsha Rav Masna be Papunya. Rav Masna taught it in the town of Papunya. He says, Anisha should only use Mayim Shalom. Now Rashi explains, they didn't necessarily understand. They didn't know Lashon Kodesh. They thought that Mayim Shalom means our my water. You can only use for your matzah my water. So they were uh, compliant people. The next day, after they heard the drush, the next day, so everybody came along with their pitchers and came to Rav Masna. They told him, give us some of your water. We need to bake our matzahs. He so told him, no, that's not what I meant. You misunderstood. I know, but my devisu amr. I meant water which stayed overnight. Why does it have to remain outside overnight? So Rashi says because in the Yemei Nisan, which is the last month of the winter, since the sun is positioned low in the horizon, this is based on the Gemara land of Tzadik Dalit, since it's low down the horizon, it, um, it affects the underground waters and heats them up a bit. So we have to take it out leave it out overnight, and allow it to cool off. And then only then use it for matzah. So he said, Ano, but my devisu amru. I meant water, shalonu, which remained overnight, out of the source, which allows it to cool off. It doesn't have to be my water, my shalonu. Dorish Rav, so Rav taught as follows, Isha lo yisolosh b'chama. Nisha should take care not to knead her dough in, um, in the direct sunlight. V'loy b'chama, chama, nor using water which was heated by the sun. And as Rashi says, certainly not using water which, which was heated by ordinary heat. So all these things can generate a chimut's concern. Nor should she use water which was drawn out of the bottom of the mulya or the kettle, which is still considered uh, warm or lukewarm. And when the Isha is engaged in kneading and preparing the bread, she should continue engaging the dough, she shouldn't leave it idle. She shouldn't lift her hand during the preparation of, uh, of uh, baking until she finishes the whole process. You meant to be constantly in action, engaging your dough. Don't leave it idle for a moment for concern that it might turn into chametz. What else does she need to do? Or some say, She's to have two containers of water. One that she draws water from it to, uh, she dips her hand, takes some water out, and uses it to 
smooth and to shape the dough. And the other container is where she'll place her hand into that container, into the water, to cool off her hand. As she points out, she shouldn't use the first container to cool her hand because the first container, on account of the constant activity in and out, warms up and it's going to warm up her hand and warm up the dough. So she needs to cool her hand off using another container of water. Iboilu, so the Bnei Yeshiva asked the Shaila, Avra Veloshamal. So we have all these guidelines. Keep your dough active, keep it warm, don't use warm water, etc. Let's say she was Avra. She didn't comply. Avra Velasha. She needed the dough using warm water. Ma, what is the Allah? Do we apply a knas? Do we say, well, you didn't comply with the Allah? Let's just presume it to be chametz. Let's give it an Allah of a, of a double chametz. As she explains on account of a knas. And it's Asr. Is it or is it not? Mazutra Amma Mutar. Although initially, you're not meant to do it in this manner, but if you do it, we don't give it a din of chametz, and it's mutter to be eaten. Rav Ashi Yama Asr. According to Rav Ashi, we apply a knas, and we treat it like chametz. Amma Mazutra. How did I know that it's mutter? The sana, because we found a similar price elsewhere. One is not meant to soak the barley grain. They would do it in order to loosen it, to allow the um, bran to be removed easily and to allow for proper milling and produce highly refined flour. So you're not meant to do that on Pesach because of a chimut's concern. The Mlasas, if he soaked his grain, bid the Yavid, then we take a look at it. This Baku Asur, if they became bloated to the point that we see they're beginning to split, in which case we see the chimut's process is about to begin, then you can no longer eat them. However, if they hadn't yet split, then they're mutu, even though he was over on the din. So we see that we don't give it a din of chametz. He meant to avoid this process, but with the Eved, we don't apply a din of chametz. Therefore, when it comes to this Isha who used hot water to produce her dough, it's not recommended, but with the Eved, we don't give it a din of chametz. So that's what Ramazot is speaking. Rav Ashi, he disagrees, right? He said that in this case, if she was Avar Velasha, it's also. So he responds by saying like this, Atu Kulu, are you going to say that all cases are similar? Chada Machisa Machisinu, all cases were weaved in one weave? You can't compare one to the other. Perhaps there's a reason why in the case of soaking the grain, although the Chathil is not meant to do it, but the Evet, perhaps it doesn't carry such a great con- concern of chimutz there. It's only the kernel itself. Perhaps over there the Chacham did not consider it chimutz, but maybe over here it's a greater concern of chimutz, it's in the dough itself, which is warming up. Whatever the reason is, you can't compare one to the other. They're all in one weave, all halachas, all restrictions, all guidelines are considered one and the same. Well, we have a clear halacha, such as in the case of the Lisisa, where we learned l'chatchil, you don't do it, but with the it's okay. Fine, itma. So we apply that over there. Ve'echad itma. However, where we don't have any clarity, we don't have a chachamim who said, well, it's mutab adiyavid, la itma, then we don't apply it. So in our case, perhaps it's different, and indeed Ravashi holds, that the Isha, who decided to do lisha in an inappropriate manner, bidiyavid, we apply a knas, and we consider it to be chametz, and the Isha is us. Hadran Allah kol Continues the Mishnah. Ve'elu oivim bepesach. The Mishnah will give us a list of various forms of chametz. The common denominator will be that's not standard, typical chametz, a piece of bread. It's something which is either a taruvis, a mixture of chametz with something else, or chametz nuksha, inferior quality chametz, not really so edible. And this is going to be the list in our Mishnah. Ve'el oivim bepesach, Rashi learns. Oivim means you're oivim baliro balimatsa, if you have these items around. Therefore, you're meant to be mevired before Pesach. What is the list? We have a total of eight different items. Kuta Chabavli. Kuta Chabavli was a, a dip, which was made from whey, the uh, watery substance of milk, breadcrumbs, which would be left there in this, in this thing to mold, and salt. So Kuta Chabavli, Babylonian Kuta, which contains um, chametz, of course. The Sheikh Ramadai. Sheikh Ramadai was... Beer from Madai. V'shchemetz ha'daymi. 
the edaim vinegar, v'zeisa mitzri, some other type of recipe which contains chametz, v'zoyim shel tzaboim. This was a bran uh, broth, some type of liquid, which would contain bran, and would be used by the tzaboim, those who would die. V'amilan shel tzabochim. This was some type of bread which was used by the cooks. V'kolin shel soifim, glue used by the soifim. V'laz oimer, one more substance, which is af tachshit enoshim, also the cosmetics used by the enoshim. So you have a total of eight substances which, according to Rashi, entail by Yerob HaLimotz. Ze'aklal, this is the rule, kol shumim in dogon, anything that contains some form, some variety of dogon, hareza over with Pesach, there's an Isra by Yerob of having it around, and the which concludes, but you meant to know there's a difference between these substances and your standard chametz. Hare'elu bahazar. If a person should eat these things, since you're not eating straight away chametz, it's a mixture, or it's chametz nuksha, then there's a lav, azhara. Ve'evam shem curse. However, there's no curse liability on account of eating these things. Let's take a look at Rashi inside. Five lines from the bottom. Ve'elu oivren aleyin bebal yiro bal yimot. Ve'kulum of fire shlubu gemar, the gemar will explain everything. Zeisam, mezoyman, ve'kulum amil, all the different types of substances. Tachshit enoshim, the gemar of fire shlubu gemar will explain why exactly was there a Chomet's concern when it came to Tachshit Enoshim? And the mission concludes, Zaklal, anything that's min dogan, all different types of, of grain, Chamishamin, and Chitin, Osir, and Makusim, Shbal, Shol, Shifan, contains any of these, he must get rid of it before Pesach. And the mission concludes, however, when it comes to Achila, as Hara applies, a lav, Ve'ed ma'im kars im achlan, avye lav yesh ba'achilasan, b'gmar yof l'kul. The gmar will teach us the mocker for this concept. So Rashi learns ve'el o'ever means be'bal yoro ba'yim Taisa disagrees. He says, Me'ech Taisa, how do we know that even a mixture or even chamis nuksha generates bal yoro ba'yim Rather, says Taisa, nil rabbin atam, there's no bal yoro ba'yim When the Mishnah says ve'el o'ever, it means you can't eat it. So ever means o'ever ma'al ha'shulchan. It needs to be removed from one's table. So that it doesn't come to eat it, as the Mishnah concludes, because there's a love when a person eats these things. But of course, Bali Rabbi Yimotza, Taisus learns, doesn't apply to these cases. Continues the Gemara. Tanu Rabbanu. So once we discussed Kutach HaBavli, the Gemara will describe it a bit further and relate to it. Tanu Rabbanu. Shloisha Dvarim Nemorim B'Kutach HaBavli. There are three things which were said with regard to Kutach HaBavli. Three um, non-complementary things. Metamtam is halev. It clogs a person's heart. Umasam is anayim, and it causes blindness. Umachar saguf, and it weakens the entire body of a person. Explains the Gemara. Metamtam is halev. Why does it clog the heart? Because the nesuba the chal, because of the the nesuba the chal, the way the soilus of the chalav, the watery substance coming from the chalav, which apparently is detrimental to one's heart. Umasam is anayim. Why does it cause blindness? Mishum milcha because of the Salt content, we know that melach stoimus, which is a very uh, intense, strong type of salt, can cause blindness, it becomes into contact with one's eyes, so that apparently this kutach contained this type of melach. And finally, makhach saguf, it weakens a person's body, mishum kum nisa duum, on account of the mold of the um, crumbs found in this dip. There are three things that increase a person's body waste. And bend and detract from a person's posture, weaken the person. And detract one part of 500 from a person's eyesight. So what are these three things that are detrimental to a person? Elohim. Pas Kibar. Pas Kibar is bread made from the Soilus of the soilus brand, etc. V'sheich or chadash, fresh beer, v'yarak chai, and raw vegetables. Rashi says leeks, onions, if they're eaten in large quantities. Tanur Rabbanu Shloisha Dvarim have a beneficial effect on a person. Matanas Hazel they diminish a person's body weight. V'zeikven Sakayma they strengthen a person's. Um, Straighten out a person's uh, posture, and illuminate one's eyes. They're healthy. 
Eloheinu, what are these three things? Pas nakia, clean, highly refined uh, flat, uh, bread, basar shomein, fatty meat, v'yayin yoshin, and aged wine. Explains the Gemara, pas nakia, what does that mean? The smida made from refined flour. Basar shomein, fatty meat, the spirta de loy aftach, which was produced from a tzvirta, a, a goat, who had not yet given birth. Yayin yoshin, what is that? Atik, atiki, over-aged, overly aged wine, Rashi says, shoshalei shonem, Three years old. Continues the Gemara. Generally speaking, every remedy has a side effect. So something which is beneficial to one ailment, will have a negative effect on a different part of the person's body. And something which is has a detrimental effect on one part of the body, will be beneficial to another portion of the body. So that's a general rule. Medicines carry side effects. Levar bar mizan gvila, except for the following items, which are good throughout, except for the zangvila, retiva, fresh ginger, opilpuli aruchta, long pepper, pasnakia, refined bread, ubasar shaman, fatty meat, viain yoshan, aged wine, the malil kul gufe, which is beneficial, comprehensively beneficial to a person's entire body. So the mission gave us a list of Eight items, eight substances with, which contain chametz in various versions, various forms. And the first one was the kutach habavli, which we just, just discussed, which contains some breadcrumbs. What's number two on the list? Sheikhar hamadi. What's wrong with sheikhar hamadi? Explains the Gemara. The uh, madai beer had chametz. The romu be mesar because they would place some barley, barley uh, water, barley juice into the uh, Sheikhar, and therefore it's Chomet on account of that. Next on the list is V'chaim Etzad What's wrong with the Edoim vinegar? The Shodu Sari. Because they would, they would add some, some barley into the uh, vinegar, into the um, concoction to make it, they would add it to the, the wine actually, to make it into, turn into vinegar. Because otherwise the wine was of such high quality. It would not sour, not turn into vinegar. They have to add barley in order to produce vinegar. Omar of Nachma Yitzchak, Betchila, originally, Kshemavin Nesachim Yuda, when they would bring the Nesachim for the Mizbeach from the Yehuda area of Yerushalayim. So as a result of the Schus, the fact that Yehuda supplied the wine for the Beis HaMikdash, Lo Yehoyah Yenam Shal Yehuda Machnitz, their wine would not sour. They couldn't produce vinegar from their wine. It was of such high quality, such superior quality wine. They were compelled to put soerim into the wine to produce vinegar. So all the all the chaymets, all the vinegar produced in Yehuda inevitably contained um, barley, was, was chaymets. All the chaymets was chaymets because otherwise it wouldn't sour, it wouldn't turn into vinegar. For your current oisli chaymets tam. And that's why when you speak about chaymets plain, you're referring to the chaymets that has um, chaymets in it, has barley, because otherwise you couldn't produce vinegar from their, from their wine, which was of such superior quality and would resist fermentation. So that was originally, during the time when the Mesmeish was standing. Va'achshav, however, nowadays, after the Golas, that power, that, that, that element of, of superiority and the fact that the the wine was of such high quality that that quality was transferred from Yehuda, from Kal Yisrael to the Adaimim. That's the um, nature of Golas. So rather than having this phenomenon regarding the Yain of the Yehuda, this phenomenon was present in the Yainim of the Adaimim, of the Adaimim, of Adaim. Because now they were on top, they were uh, in charge, and they were given this quality. So now their wines were of such quality that it would resist fermentation. Until they would add some soer and some barley to create the fermentation. That explains our Mishnah. And now, that is called Chaymet Sadaimi because in Edom, their um, their chaymets contain the soer. So specifically, this vinegar 
has a chametz concern because otherwise they couldn't make vinegar. This was the only way they would do it. So the chametz hadoimi specifically contains chametz. This is a fulfillment of the pasuk. This concept that the qualities, the milus of Yisrael, gets transferred temporarily to the adoimim. This is the fulfillment of the pasuk. Imola hachareva. The pasuk here is describing a virtual conversation between Sur, which belonged to Rome, discussing with Yerushalayim and saying, "Imola hachareva, I'm going to fill up from the." Um, Desolation of Yerushalayim. Im malei azu charvazu. When one of them is full and inhabited, the other one is desolate. Im malei azu. If the other one is filled, charivazu. The other one is desolate. It's either one or the other. It's either Yisrael or the Havdal the Goy. Renach meitzel gamam yach. We find this concept in a different pasuk. Rivka Meina went to ask, "Vatelach lidus Hashem, what's going on? I feel this conflict, this battle going on in my inside." And they told her it's actually two nations. Fighting and battling for control. One kingdom, one nation is going to try, try to strengthen himself and prevail over the other. So it's a constant tug of war between the, the Israel, the Goyim, the Toiv, and the Ra, etc. Continues the Gemara. Tanya, Omar Yehuda, Bereshoina, initially, in the early generations, Yehuda, Bereshoina, in the area of Yehuda, in the Nerus Yisrael, Bereshoina, originally, a person purchases. Vinegar from Amaretz. There's no need for him to be concerned that the Amaretz didn't separate the Maser. Why? Because there's no need to separate Maser from vinegar. Why? The presumption is that vinegar at that point was produced not from wine, because as we discussed earlier, that wine wouldn't produce vinegar. It came from Temet. So Rashi describes Temet as follows. They would have water poured on the Remnants of the grapes, whether the skins, whether the leaves, the, you know, the uh, residue on the bottom of the barrel, they would fill with water and then have it sit there. And somehow the, the, uh, the effect, the grape material, whatever it was, affected the wine and it soured. So initially, vinegar would only be produced in this manner because their wine was of such high quality that it wouldn't produce vinegar. And therefore, Abida maintains, there's no concern of uh, Meiser, because this thing is not Chayva Meiser, since it wasn't produced from wine. This was initially, Va'achshav, but nowadays, when the wine, the quality of wine in Eretz Yisrael dropped, and Chaymetz can be produced from wine as well, so Allah changes as well. Halakeh Chaymetz from Eretz, a person purchases vinegar from Eretz, Tzorach La'asa, he needs to do Meiser, why? Shechaz Kosa in Abu El Menayan, because it is presumed to have been produced from wine. Because nowadays, vinegar is produced from this low-grade wine, which produces vinegar. Says Digma, one second, but Temer itself, do you mean to say it's not Chayim and Meis? The suburb of Yudah, Temer, Temer, the Lav Bar Yisuri? Rabbi the whole that Temer is Lav Bar Yisuri? There's no din of Meisr by Temer? We have a Mishnah which indicates otherwise. Vatanan, Hamad Tamad, person produces the Temer, Venasan Maim Bamidah. And he placed some water there, poured in a measure of water. No, he poured in a liter or a gallon of water. And he took it out. He found only the liter or the gallon that he put in. Same amount that he put in, he took out. There was no, there was no addition to the shear. Potter, then he's potter from Meiser because we assumed there was no wine contained in the whatever substance he poured the water on. The right is because he ended up with the same amount that he poured in. So that's the sheet of the Tanakam. So it's potter from mice. Wine doesn't have mice, right? So if it's just water, uh, water doesn't have mice. So if it's just water, then it's potter from mice. Rabbi the Machayv. He says Yechayv. Why? Apparently, even though there's no essence, no substance of wine contained in the Temed, as Rashi explains, the Ozl Basa Chazus of Atam. He follows the color, the taste, the flavor. Since it looks and tastes, and tastes like wine, as it did of wine, and there's a Chayv of mice. So what do we see? That according to Rabbi Yehuda, Temet is Chayv HaMais. So why should we tell us that a person in the uh, olden days, a person purchased vinegar from the Be'aretz, is no Chayv HaMais because it's coming from Temet. Temet is Chayv HaMais. Hachik Omar, this is what Rabbi meant to say. Granted, Temet itself is, is Chayv HaMais, but 
don't suspect that the Amorites cut corners and avoided doing the Tumas Amishas when it came to Temet because it's a commodity of low value. Why would he go ahead and cut corners and avoid the Tumas Amishas? So granted, Temet is Chayim Amishas, according to Abida. But what he meant is that there's no, you don't have to suspect that the Amorites avoided giving the Tumas Amishas because it's not something of high value. And we assume that he followed through the way he's supposed to do. Ibo Eisema, another pshat is, Nechshatu. Theoretically, the Amorites is suspected of avoiding the Tumor Mas even when it comes to Temen. If that's the case, we're back to the Kasha. Initially, Rida says that a person purchased the Chaymets, which was produced from Temen, he doesn't have to worry about the mice. Then we have a Mishnah, that Temen is Chayva Maisu. Well, the Kasha, the answer is, it depends what the Temen was produced from. Ha Bidi Ravka, the Mishnah, where Rita says that Temen is Chayv and Masa, is speaking where he poured water on the Shmarm, leaves. In which case, there's still some wine substance absorbed therein, and that gets expelled when he puts the water on it. So that's considered to be true wine, and according to Abhuda, that makes, generates Chayv and Masa on the Temen. Ha the Purzani. The first Abhuda, where Chametz purchased from the arts. It tells no concern or hashash of, of Meiser because it's being produced from Temet. It's speaking about the Temet produced using grape pits, which don't really have any wine absorbed in them. And therefore, pouring water, wine on these things, water on these things, that doesn't generate any uh, item of substance here. It's just wine, it's just water with some sort of light color and light flavor coming out of this, these pits. It's not considered to be essentially a wine product, and therefore, even according to Buda, it would be potter from ice. Perhaps let's see Rashi inside here. If Rashi would begin, that's not 12 lines from the top. Beginning with the word Betchila. So why is it called Chaymet Sadaimi? The more told us because initially, when the Mishra was standing, the quality of wine in Yehuda was of such high level that it wouldn't produce, it couldn't produce vinegar from it until you put some soyrim in it, making it chametz. And nowadays, that was transferred to the edoimium, and their wine wouldn't sour unless you add some barley. And that explains the Mishnah, chametz adoimi. The edoimi barley, the edoimi vinegar, is considered chametz because they can't produce chametz. Vinegar unless they have chametz. Says Rashi Betchila, Shabbat Shalom, Mikdash Kaim, they would bring the Nesachim from Yehuda, uveschus ha-Nesachim, in merit of the Nesachim, ha-Yitam b'yeinam, that wine was of such high quality, below your machmet, and wouldn't sour. But then it was transferred. Unfortunately, a Molach HaReva, Reisha Dekro, Yan, Omer Tzor Yishalayim, Ach, Esmalei Merchubani Shishalayim, Tzor, is conversing with Yishalayim, so to speak, I'm going to fill from your Chorban, V'tzor me'edem hi. So, Edem was granted this quality, we can't have a simultaneous kingdom by Yaakov and Esav. It's either one or the other. I think we'll proceed with a discussion regarding Temet. Temet Bufit. The reader says, initially, if a person purchased Choymetz from Amaretz, you can be sure that it was produced from Temet. Why? Because actual wine wouldn't produce would come from this low-grade wine mixture. That was initially. Now, bottle tamayin. So the yayin went down in quality. And sours. And therefore, it's pato mala asr. Oh, pato is going on the Mishnah there. Now, regarding temed, according to Tanakama, it's pato. Pato mala asr. Shari inkan el amayim. They only have water. What's the riot? What do you find? Found the same gal that he put in. Says Rashi, even though in its color and its flavor, you feel, you taste wine. Can you the pair ba'amu It's just a slight flavor that the um, pair gave into the water, but it's not really the true essence of wine. That's the Tanakama. So Temed is not Chayiv and Mas. Rabbi the Machayiv, because he says. Flavor and taste and the color is good. It's considered 
It's something to reckon with. The Ozl Basa Chazus of Atama, he follows the color and the flame. If that's the case, so how could we tell us that vinegar produced from Temed carries no concern of Maser? Temed? Schaiva Maser. Hachik Omar, this is what he meant to say. Mas Nisa Kamais in the first price. Yeah, Temer is Chayim, but on the it's not suspected of avoiding it. It's not something of significance, not something of value. That's why a person purchases it, he's Potter from the mind. That's the first Pshat. The second Pshat the was Nechshto. Yeah, even when it comes to Temer, they're going to try and cut corners. If that's the case, why if a person purchased Chaymets from Amaretz in the olden days, there's no concern because since it's coming from Temed, there's no concern of Maisa. What do you mean? Why is there no concern? Says Rashi, Rabbi Yudim, Masa Naisa Kamaisa, Taimet, Mishun the Pata, Filu Masa Vadai. Even if it would really, really be Chayva Masa, not from Amaretz, which is really a suffix, we learned earlier it's only a, a Miut. Suppose it's really Temel, you know there was no Masa separated from the, from the Temed. It would be Potter. Why? Ubetemed the purtsinikamer. Speaking of temed, which is produced by the uh, using pits, shenoyis the mine mechartzana. Vu marchmet some marziach achazman kianatoyis that turns into some sort of vinegar. Vayim betemed. Vu last be elkiu the pera. That certainly only has a slight flavor, and that is not significant enough to be mechayv a mas. And that's what Ravid was was speaking about. Chaim it's produced from temed, which was made in this um, in this very light fashion. The bride of Mishnah, where Rita says, Temen is Chayev, was speaking about higher quality Temen. They would place water in the Shmarim itself, the leaves. That's also a version of Temen. Now, even though he only took out what he put in, he only found the same gallon that he poured in. It's Chayev. Why? It says Rashi, We assume that the Wine which was previously absorbed in the, in the shmarim has now been expelled, replaced by the water. So there was an exchange of liquid. The water went in, forcing the the uh, wine essence out of the shmarim. Some of the water went into the shmarim, so there was an exchange, and the temet contains some real wine. Therefore, quite a bit it's chayv mas. So just to surmise the sugya. The mission says chometz adami is considered a chometz mixture because nowadays their, their wine is of such high quality, it doesn't produce chometz. The only way to produce vinegar is by inserting some barley, just as in the old days in Yehuda, there was this phenomenon. Now it's been transferred to Edom, until Mashiach comes, may remain, no amen. That's concerning chometz. Now regarding temet, which is this wine water mixture, According to Rabbi Yudah, it's Chayev. According to Rabban, it's Pata from Maisa. We have two approaches. Either Rabbi Yudah is Machayev, any type of Temet. Or the second terrace of the Gemara depends what type of Temet. High quality Temet, according to Rabbi Yudah, is Chayev. But low quality is Pata. Continues the Gemara, Vizesa Mitzri. This is the next item on the list. That contains a Chomet's concern. Maizesa Mitzri, what exactly is this? Torah of Yosef. It's the following recipe. Tilsa Sari. A third... Barley flour, tilsa kurtumi, a third saffron, a tilsa milcha, a third salt. So, this is the concoction which is called zesa mitzri. And of course, it has a soir, so it's chametz. Rapapa mapik sari, umayel chiti. Rapapa would substitute barley for wheat. Bissimonach, not to remember who said what. So, it was Yasef, Rav Yasef, who said soirim. Bissimonach sisni, sisni is uh, some type of bowl, type of kli. That's a way to remember who said what. Or very safe said se'orim, so sisni. So what do they do with these ingredients? Torilu. They go ahead and they soak it. Torilu, v'kaliluhu, and they roast it. V'tachlu, and they grind it. V'shaslu, and they drink it. M'divcha v'latzarta, from shvuas, from Pesach until shvuas. It's meant to serve as a remedy for the following element. The comet, the comet a person who has a constricted bowel system, bowel the digestive system, marpile, loosens him. It serves as a laxative. Udurapi, if a person has a loose system, mikhamatli, it constricts it. However, 
for an ill person or a pregnant woman, sakanta, it's actually dangerous to take this type of ill, type, type of remedy because uh, of its um, laxative effect, which is dangerous in these circumstances. So the next item on the list is Zenoyim Shel What exactly is this? Here in Babel, they interpret it as follows. It's this paste used as glue by the uh, shoemaker. Rav Simi has no Amar, he had a different approach. Zetipul and Shal Bnei Sashirim. I'm speaking about a hair removal paste used by the Bonais of wealthy families. So while they're still using it, there's no Chametz concern. But then when they leave some over for the Bonais of poor families, that added delay brings about a Chametz concern. Shemesh Shiris Oisoi, who leaves some over the Bonais Aniyim to the daughters of poor families. So Kailan Shal Soifrim, Soifrim, is the Mlam de Tinoikis, the Rebbeim of small children, Rashi says they're Aniyim. So the Koylan Shel Soifrim has a Chomet's concern. Amy says, well, How can you say this is the Pshan the mission? That it's the uh, hair removal paste. Vatan or Rabbi taught us like this. That our Mishnah, according to Tanakam at least, we have seven substances. Says Rabbi Chia, we have two categories. Arba Minya Medina, four of them are used by the general population. Kutach Bavli, the Chaymet Hadoimi, Sheikh Hamadai, Zayis Hamitzri, some things which are commonly used. Ushloisha Minei Umnas. And we have another three which are Minei Umnas, used by craftsmen. So now, if Koylan Shal Soifrim is something used by the shoemakers, fine, then it works. So the first four in the Mishnah are commonly used items, and the final three are many umnas. However, according to you, we amnas, tipul and shabnais hashirim, that kolon shal soifrim is in reference to the hair removal paste. My mini umnas. Ika, how do you get the three mini umnas? It's something which is commonly used. You don't have three things in the Mishnah which are intended for craft use. Ve'el amai perur de ushkifi. Okay, so according to you, it's the glue for the shoemakers. Am I currently high kolon shel soifrim? So why is it called kolon shel soifrim? Kolon shel ratz onen miboyle. Rather than kolon shel soifrim, it should have been called kolon the paste, the glue of the ratz onen, the shoemakers. So this perhaps is a riot to me that it's referring to the hair removal paste used by the bonei sanim of the soifrim. Amar b'aishano lo elam piru de Truthfully, we're speaking about the glue of the ushkafi of the shoemakers. If that's the case, why do we call it kolon shal soifrim? The soifrim nami, because the scribes, the soifrim, they, they as well use this substance. Mad bekenbu, they are saying, they use this glue to glue together their, um, their papers. So it's a dual use item. It's glue used by the shoemakers. And also by the soifrim. Continues the Gemara. Rav Lezer Omer, Av Tachshite Nosh. He added an eighth to the list. Cosmetics used by Nosh. Tachshite Nosh of Sankadaitach. Every Tachshit of Isha is Hamas. Why? Why is that? Ela Eimar rather say like this. Av. Rav Lezer is adding Av to Pule Nosh. This hair removal paste used by the Nosh, which contains Hamas. Ask Taisvitz. Well, according to Rav Simach is not. Who learned that Kolon Shel Soifrim means that very same item? So why the repetition? What's Rebbe Lezer adding? So it says that we're speaking about two different types of usages. Earlier we're speaking about removing facial hair. Here we're speaking about something used to remove move hair from more private areas, which, in which case the paste becomes uh, moist and and perhaps inedible. And the chiddush would be that even this type of chametz, according to Rebbe Lezer, is considered still edible and has the same halacha as the other items in the Mishnah. Where do we find that they would use this type of paste to move hair? The Rabbanis Yisrael, who have arrived at the stage that they begin growing this pubic hair, and have not yet come of age, so it's embarrassing. So the bonnets of poor families, how do they remove the hair? Using lime. But as Hashirim, what do they do? Teiflis, Eis, and Besoilis. They use this flower paste. But as Malachim, Beshemanam, Moir. 
the bana is the prince, the princesses, they use Shem and Amar to remove their hair. Shenemar, we learn in Mikilas Esther, Shisha Hadoshim, Bishem and Hamar, six months, they use, they anointed themselves, there's, there's a special Shem and Hamar. My Shem and Hamar, what exactly is this? Rav Huna Bar Yim Amar, Satkas. And she says, Lo Yisparish, I'm not sure exactly what this is, some sort of uh, oil, some sort of uh, anointing oil. The Rav Yirmi Aba Abba Amar, he says it means like this, Shem and Zayas, it's olive oil, produced from olives, Shlohevi Shlish, which have not yet arrived, achieved a third of their ripeness. So take these olives and press it into the olive oil used for this purpose. Tanya, Rabbi Do'emer Ampiknen. The Mishnah Menachah says that we're not meant to use Ampiknen for Menachahs. What is that? Shem and Zayiz, Shlevi Shlish. According to him, Ampiknen is the same as the uh, Shem and Amor, according to the uh, last Pshad. They're both Shem and Zayis of Zayis, which was Lehevi Shlish. Okay, so what's the point of smearing this uh, Shem and Hamor? Because it removes unwanted hair, and it makes the skin go. Let's make a quick Chazar of today's daf. It began with the Meita Shmisha Shal Nachtim, the water which the baker uses. You must make sure that it doesn't gather and turn into chametz. Rava tells us that the Isha should not uh, produce her dough uh, under the sun and using warm water. Rita says, meant to use Maim Shalom, make sure it cools off prior to use. We had the story about the people in Papanoi who <laughs> came running with their, their kale and they thought Maim Shalom was his water. And he told, no, no, I mean Shalom, they've slept, they've been taken out of their source and left to cool overnight. And what about Bidi Evan? Hamachlaik is going to Marzutra, it's Lomoto, going to Ravashi, it's us. We learned the Mishnah, which gave us a list of seven, or according to Beleza, eight items, which aren't really pure chametz, they're either a mixture or uh, partially an edible chametz, chametz nuksha. In which case, a person should eat it, it's only allowed, there's no curse. But, as Rashi learns, Elu Evan, you must remove it, get rid of it before Pesach, to avoid Isabel Yeraga Yimotza. Which gave us a whole list. The more explained, went down the list one by one, why each one either is mixed with chametz or is chametz nuksha, and therefore you must remove it before Pesach. Zayigzant, much, much hatzlocha.